So once a year, they take the Constitution out in the middle of the sea and they turn it around. I did that. And you would think like, oh, you know, you were on the ship. You got to go on the ship. How many mm -hmm. people can say they went right. out on the ship and have the Constitution and yep. turn around? I was in the bit in the bathroom of the Constitution sniffing 80s. Looking back, I said, damn, like, that's red flag. You have a problem. Wow. Hey everybody, welcome to the Bounce Back Podcast. I'm your host Bobby. I got a special guest with me. It's been a minute, man. Why don't you tell the people your name and where you're from? Keith Rubino, Medford, Mass. My family's from Cambridge. You know, my mom, mm -hmm. my dad, they separated, you know, when I was one. Okay, so yeah. you had no, like, really... That's like my parents been apart so long I don't remember them being together so right. like, it was just the way it was you know right. what I mean it wasn't yeah. like no traumatic thing it's just always been like that right father was gone mom would did her own thing for a long time right you know what I mean it just was always that way so, so talk to me about um high school man were you athlete I played hockey growing up you know travel hockey football mm -hmm. um I went to Arlington Catholic as a freshman I was probably one of the only freshmen that was going to be able to play for Arlington Catholic as a freshman for varsity. Okay, so you were good. So you were good. I was decent, you decent. know what I mean? And and I mean like the competition wasn't the best, but like I, I was pretty good. But I never got that chance because of my grades. Oh, so I just, yeah. you know, high school, I was always running around trying to chase girls. My priorities okay. were out of whack. You were know? you like not showing up and stuff like that? Just or? everything, you know, like I, I didn't, you know, I didn't really study. I just went in, like, you know, middle school and stuff, I could fake it, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. C <laughs> average, and I'll be good, and then I get to, like, a school where you can't, you can't fake it, you gotta kind of study, mm. and, and, you know, I know, I didn't do that. Did you graduate? I did graduate, yeah, and so I ended up, I got kicked out after my freshman year, I played, like, three games as a, as a freshman, four, the AC freshman team, I had, like, four touchdowns, like, two interceptions, and then, like, mid, midterms came out, mm -hmm. and they were, like, my 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 like theology teacher was the varsity coach and he was like trying to pull some strings to like get me to play right. and like there was just like my grades were so bad they were just like there's no way and so then i fit so then i failed out of there they wouldn't let me back for my sophomore year i went to method high and then once i got into method high it was just like free for all it was like less about sports and that's when it was like kind of like when things started taking a turn for the worse, it was more like was it a lot like a lot of um like partying? What was like kind of the extracurricular stuff that kids were doing there? You know, never going to class, and that was like the normal. And then you know, like back, I was back comfortable where it's like I could fake it, right? You know what I mean, and I could get by. Do the bare minimum. Yeah, I knew from a young <laughs> age that I was like college wasn't for me. Right. You know, like I never had a desire to like want to go to college and like. Why you know. do you think that was? It just didn't interest you. Did it nobody I, in your? Because for me, I feel like. Not too many people in my family went, so for me it was exactly. just kind of that was the already exactly my I my, had, my like. dad my you know and it's funny like I'm I'm a father now and like my stepfather growing up I used to like despise him mm. I used to think he was like the biggest right you know what I mean and then like you know I would be 14, 15 he owned a landscaping company and uh and he would have me working mm. and I wanted to go out and play with my friends and do right. this and he's like you know. And then now that I'm older, I'm like, damn, he was trying to instill in me, like, hey, yeah. you know. Work ethics you want, yeah, and keep you out of trouble. And, you know? and, you know, when I became a dad, it's like, now I see that. And I'm like, oh, shit. You know, like, the yeah. stuff that he was trying to teach me, he wasn't, you know, he could have maybe put it in a in a different way. Mm -hmm. But, like, the, the the lessons that he was trying to teach me. Did you guys go, go at it? at all like when you got yeah. a little teen you know the rebellious years teenagers that was kind of like later on in life i i um you know when i started using drugs his landscaping company and then his his goal was like hey let me let me do this and then i'm gonna teach you right and then when i set you up to yeah and then when 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 you're older hopefully let's see where it is and then maybe you know this could yeah. be yours and then you could take it over and it's already established you know what i mean and then i'm my own own yeah. business owner what? and at the time it's like you know what i mean like why why am i doing this why yeah. am i waking up in the summers <laughs> at six in the morning to go to work right. and, you know what i mean like <laughs> i don't want to do that kind of limited to myself to like 
what the people around me were doing. Right. Nobody, like, we weren't, I, I would say, like, if all my friends went to college or if they went to the military, I was like a follower, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, yeah. my dad was around, but, like, I would more looked up to, like, the older dudes in my neighborhood right. for that male guidance. Plus, it's just more relatable because they're not, like, 20 years older than me. Like, right. my father, they're only a couple years, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So they get it, you more, it's more relatable, so. It, there was that, and, like, you know, one, one like, but, but like I said, back to high school, it was more, that was more like the norm going to Medford High, where it was just like you. Oh, it opens your eyes to like more different things. Like it, it, you know, like started like for me, it was like starting to sell weed, and then like when yep. I went to high school, that was when like the oxycontin epidemic was like just going yeah. off. Oh yeah, you know, and like you know, I fell victim into that. Especially around that time, it was like a lot of people didn't. No, I mean you even look back at these documentaries. They yeah. were actually pushing it, saying it wasn't addictive. Right, <laughs> you know, right. There's like big lawsuits right. against Purdue Pharma or something like that. So looking up to a lot of the older kids, and I saw them starting to go down a bad path. Luckily, I never. I don't know what it was. If I was just too much, too cheap, bro, it was too right, expensive right. for yeah, me, right, man. Yeah, right. I didn't have money like that, or um, and also just seeing things in my family, like that predated that kind of drug abuse thing too. Right. And I was kind of more turned off by it yeah and i always say everything happens for a reason like even seeing my mom struggle with addiction i'm like well maybe she had to do that so i wouldn't because yeah i'm a little extra like even if you want to say like drug of choice right like alcohol right not that it's like i i it's the best i more went towards that because i had to quit smoking weed for probation like right, if i'm gonna right. say anything my real drug of choice would be like weed right you know what i mean yeah, but i had right. to stop all that right but my most problematic thing right. right even though i'll probably choose weed more alcohol was a lot more of a problem right. for me bro right a lot more of a problem and i didn't have like anybody around me that like abused alcohol like that so i didn't see the dirty yeah. side i just saw like this is what the, everybody's doing and i just couldn't you know well so that was the difference like so so like with that that was with me so like growing up my real dad he was he suffered from like al he was an alcoholic mm -hmm. he you know and and like when I was, I remember like one of the only memories like I really have of him was like, I was in like second or third grade. He like ended up drinking himself into a coma. He was supposed to be, you know, so I went up to the Cambridge hospital with my mm -hmm. mom to say like my goodbyes, you know what I mean? Wow. And then like I did that and then like miraculously like he came, like made it through, okay. you know what I mean? And uh, so like for from an early age, like I'm like, one thing I don't want to do is like be like my dad. Right. So like, and it's weird because like, so I have that when I tried to opiate, mm -hmm. it there was just like you know like there was just something that chemically like my body fell in love with it. Mm, damn. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, and 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 then, but with alcohol, so I like kind of always try to like stay clear from alcohol. Like I was never a big drinker. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the taste of beer. Right. Like I, you know, like I, I like now I drink occasionally mm -hmm. but it's like i could go out 360 days out of the year and never drink right. or i can go like i could just say to you like i'm not i'm good i'm today like right now i'm never gonna drink again and it would just be normal Damn. you know what i mean like yep. i i just it, i can pick it up put it down but when i you know and like for a long time like i seen you know friends and family and they were getting high on pills mm -hmm. and I stayed away because of, of like what you said like how how I saw them right and I'm like damn this is ugly like what are you doing mm -hmm. you know and then like it started with me where like um my mom and my stepdad like broke up okay when I was like a senior in high school and like I was always like selling oxys a little bit and like when I say that it's not like I was like I never thought right, I was like right. a big time drug right, right, dealer, right. but like a couple extra bucks. Yeah, whatever. just yeah. you know what I mean, like just just whatever. Like every you know, a lot of kids that I knew had them at the time, and mm -hmm. they would give me some, and then I would sell it just for some extra money, yep. sneakers, whatever. And when my mom left, and like it put me in a in a in a like a weird situation because my mom and my dad were still together. He didn't know that she was cheating on him. Oh, okay. I knew. But I didn't like. How can you go tell like the guy that raised you like, like hey, you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. my mom's cheating on you. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah, like that puts you. Yeah. So like, and then so like my mom would be. So my dad would work two jobs. He would be gone overnight, 
during the week. And then I would be forced to like watch my younger sister. Yeah. And then so like now I'm a senior in high school, mm-hmm. raising my sister pretty much at night, feeding her, doing her homework, this, that. And right. then it would just like, you know, over time of like eating away that guilt, like it just, yeah. you know, and I one night I was like, you know what, fuck this. And I did it. And then I had that. And it, that's all it took. And like that it, was what, like an OC twenty or what? What? Yeah, like, yeah. Or? It was like you know a quarter, half of a okay. half. You know what I mean? So yeah, like it was probably like a half of an eight, a uh, quarter of an eighty. So it was a twenty. You know what and, I mean? In that Medford High, a lot of kids were doing that at that time. Yeah, like they were. You know, like I remember, like back in the day, like I was, you know, like there was like a couple of teachers that I was selling Damn. to. You know what I mean? Like it was like that, and like I'd be getting pulled out of like class. <laughs> And I'd be right. like, oh, so, you know, this. And then they'd be like, oh, let me get a, right. uh, you know what I mean? Like right there in the hall. That's and it, wild. it reminds and, me of like when I look back at like, I mean, I was a baby in the 80s, but like when you look at the 80s and cocaine, like right. everybody was doing like the, right. I just, the Celtics number one draft pick, Len Bias, right. overdosed on coke. That's how crazy like crazy. the 80s yeah, was with yeah, cocaine. Right. It's all over Hollywood. Right. I feel like, and it was kind of maybe that, new thing trendy thing and that might have been the same wave right with the oxycontin right all that and um and a lot of people would go to i've seen people start um doing all sorts of crazy stuff to get money for that stuff as soon as they got addicted um I, my cousin was robbing pharmacies right in brockton yeah so he got caught up in that too yeah and um and that's just wild and so when you're in high school did you act like other than your grades getting in a lot of trouble like suspensions detention like yeah. what was that about yeah like i was always getting in trouble you know just i don't know stupid stuff not going to class skipping, skipping. school yep. you know what i mean going this fighting whatever you know what i mean okay. like just stupid stuff kid stuff That's like suspended. nothing you know nothing crazy um i hung out with like i hung out with like a group of kids that you know it was kind of like with medford it was like not in cr- like when i say this it was not in like crazy like crips blood but like neighborhoods didn't get along with different neighborhoods and like you know it was you were involved in all yeah it was just you know like just stupid stuff and like that's kind of like i feel like at least in massachusetts i mean everywhere you go it's like this city's beefing with this or this part of the city like right malden right i feel like even just late i'm like everywhere you go it's kind of like that right you know and it you know like just just like i don't just kid stuff like i got into a lot of like you know, drama, like, we're, right when I graduated, I, w- I got stabbed f- from that, just Damn. different kids, you know what I mean, like... This is after you graduated? Yeah, like, the wow. year that I, the year that I graduated, that summer. So, what happened, was, were they, um, some targeting you, was it a big fight that popped up? Yeah, I mean, so, what... it, it, it was weird, like, we ended up, we, we were hanging out at a park, this kid came down, and he was like, oh, these kids were messing with me, mm-hmm. some kid called and said, oh, why don't you come down here, there was probably, like, five of us. Yeah. Then they came with like six cars full of oh. kids and then they rolled up and I started, everybody started running mm-hmm. and I started running. Mm-hmm. And then my best friend was like, I'm not running. I'm mm-hmm. not a pussy. Right. Da, da, da. <laughs> and I heard that. There's always the one. <laughs> right. And I heard it in my head and I was like, I, I, I was running and I said, I heard it and I said, damn, if something happens to him, I can't live with that. Knowing that I heard yeah. my friend, my best friend saying that he wasn't running and then I still ran. Right. And no then, man left behind. Right. <laughs> so I turned around and then I, you know, like I, I stood my back up against the fence. I got surrounded and, you know, like I just got started swinging. I thought I got hit in the back with like, you know, like I was on the ground. I thought I got hit in the back and I ended up getting stabbed. Like I got up and I'm looking on the ground. So you thought you just got like punched in the back. Yeah. Neck, kicked, kicked up, you know something. what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, you know, it didn't like hurt or nothing. It was right. just like, but when I got up, I spit. And I noticed like a pool of blood and I'm mm. like, damn, that's not coming from my lip. So Jeez. I like, you know, looked in the back and I got stabbed like in the kidney, damn. like it scratched my kidney a little bit. I mean, that's and, a, that's a dangerous area. I mean, all yeah. your organs are over there. Like how yeah. close, like I, so they said it was like was three, it? three or four centimeters from my kidney. Jeez. And like, I, you know, I went to, I ended up like driving to, in the, like I drove to the hospital in Medford and then I ended up like collapsing outside. Damn. I went inside. I was, I was like, they like stopped the bleeding and stuff. Then they transported me for the night to Mass General, stitched me up, made sure like none of my organs or whatever were, were tough. But that's you know, all it takes sometimes, right? You know, for it to be like a wrap, literally. You know, some people 
it's just random. Some people could get stabbed six, seven times, survive. Some it just right. takes the one. Right. And it's it, it, and it's, uh, it's yeah, and it's it was you know just and then after how the, many stitches? I don't you, even you remember. Don't I remember. had like I had like maybe fifteen inside, fifteen outside, or something okay. like that, or maybe eight. Like it, it, it's like it wasn't that. It was probably like that big, yeah, but it was. Yeah. I had them inside and out. Deep, it went deep. Yeah. Jeez. Well, luckily I've never, you know. Yeah. Knock on wood. Right, right. It. But now, Anything you know, like now that. I got sliced a little bit, but it wasn't like a. Right. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, this was a. Yeah. Man, oh. You know. And that, and that, that can, uh, that can end bad, man. I've seen it. Right. You know, too many times. And so this is right after high school. At this point. Right. You're still, are you just taking the OC? Is it a problem so I'm at not, this point or is it just like yeah, so, ah, dipping and dabbling a little so bit? So for me with the drugs, with the oxys especially, like there was no, you know, like revving the engine to getting get the, to, you know, the know what I mean? Wet, like I yeah. went from like when you say zero to a hundred, like that's, that's how it was for me. Like, Damn. and my friends would be, you know, my friends and, and, and stuff would be, you know, partying on the weekends and they'll sniff 80s or whatever mm -hmm. and then monday they're fine and then until right. friday and then they do it again but for me like i was like robbing my sister's piggy mm -hmm. bank selling video games like hockey equipment whatever you could like whatever i could get however i could get money that's how you know right. where i had like changed jobs from my dad like stealing and emptying those what you know when just, do you realize like wow this is actually a problem like because you go from i'm sure the first couple times you're just doing it and then like you said next thing you know Oh, you did it for the weekend, but now you're doing it all week. Right. It, like, I mean, uh, well, with, like, like a lot of times you're in it, so you don't realize until it's kind of like too late. And so you look back like, how did I get here? I think I think looking back, you like, you know, like as my story, like as my we get in more into my story, like that's when I know like this isn't normal. Like, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, like when I after I got stabbed, like all that stuff was going on with my mom that that came yeah. to a head. They broke up. I was kind of like. So now when I started stealing from my, my sister and my stepdad, he was like, you're, you're an adult now. Yeah. Like, you're not going to live here stealing from me. Right. So I was out. My mom was kind of like all over the place. She was like living in like above the Hacienda. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I mean, no, sorry, the Sunset. She Sun was above okay, the yeah, Sunset. Came, yep. And, uh, you know, like in a one-bedroom apartment. So I would like bounce into there and then like, you know, my life was like pretty much going nowhere, really. And uh, I I was like the only person that was like kind of like my, my dad, like that. Not not like my dad, but like I looked up to as a dad was my grandfather. I like tried to like stay with him and like he's, you know, steered me towards the military. Yeah. And then so that's when I went to the mil like I went to the military. But like as I was going into the military, like. Most people are like, all right, I'm joining the military now. Right. Me, I was like, all right, I'm joining the military. Mm -hmm. So the night before you join the military, like you go to boot camp, mm -hmm. they have you stay at a hotel over by um, the BJ's in, in Woburn or whatever, yeah. uh, off of 95. And they have you stay there. They wake you up in the morning at like 5. They bring you to the MEPS building. And okay. then you like do some paperwork, stuff like that. They send you to boot camp. So the night before I was going into the, the Navy, it was like, I remember it was Super Bowl Sunday. I, so I went that night, it was a Sunday, okay. and I was going to the Navy on Monday. And I was in the hotel the night before I'm leaving for the military, sniffing 80s. So at this point, you're still So, going, you know what I mean? Like that just tells you, like, you know, like, that's, looking back, I'm like, damn, that was, I had a problem then. You know, like, I knew that it was a problem then, but I didn't want to, like, admit it. I, it right, was more right. like, oh, I could stop. And then when I, you know, I flew to Chicago to go to boot camp and I'm like, you know, taking a drug test and I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to be back in a week because I just was they, sniffing the So 80s. what happens? They boot you out or do you have to, no, are so you the, kick, so, like, are you sick? So it's weird. I think like I was so busy doing stuff, like you're doing things, right. you don't have like time to be sick. Right. You know what I mean? Because I mean, it was weird. Like I kicked, I've kicked oxys, I've kicked dope, I've kicked methadone, like I've kicked all that, and it sucks. Right. There, from what I remember, it was like I was, I didn't kick bad. Like I could sleep at night. Maybe right. it was just because we was doing so much stuff, and I was forced to do it. Like I couldn't be right. like, oh, I don't want, I'm right, gonna right, sit right. this out. Yep. So like I, you know, I didn't notice the the, the withdrawal. But so like a lot of it. I mean, I'm real big on every, like. A lot of things up here, it's right. mental, and you're you're 
stimulating yourself physically. You're busy. Your mind's not just right. sitting there. Like, for right. instance, like in a jail cell right. where you just got nothing. Like, you're stuck there and you can't move around. You know what I right. mean? And it's, it seems like that's, it's more magnified yes. because you're mentally, you know what's going You know what I mean? You're yes. in your head. Whereas you seem right. like to be just so busy that it kind of... Right. And it was like new, so I'm like, oh, what's this? Like, right. we're going here yeah. and this, you know what I mean? And like, like I said, I like later on, I, I, I've kicked methadone in jail, and it sucks, you know what I mean? So you, so pretty much, so what ended up happening? Did that drug test come so I, back? So luckily, or so skate luckily, through? I skated through. How long I was boot camp? Boot camp. So boot camp for me, it, it was either two or three months, and then I stayed longer because I run in your final um, fitness test to pass mm -hmm. boot camp. I fucking got shin splints and I couldn't finish in time. So I had to go wait for my leg to heal. So that was like an extra month and a half. So it, I had like, wait, you got to go back home to wait or you just, no, wait you stay there. So now the at this okay. point, you're not doing nothing, just sitting there. And then you go to like physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And then like, so then I passed that. I went, I graduated, I went to school. Um, and then that my schooling for the, for the Navy was like a month. And then I landed in Virginia. Okay. And then that's where you get to like your your final like you know your, your job for so the military. So when I think of the navy, I think of like oceans and water and all that. Were you on boats and stuff? Shit. I was. Like so that? like I like so I got lucky like so the w so my I wasn't at, on a ship. Mm -hmm. I was a part of like they call beach masters. Okay. So I always say to like explain it to people is like saving Private Ryan. They yeah. have those guys in the beginning and they're on the little boats and then they drop the 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 gate to the to the boat mm -hmm. and they all come running to yep. storm the beach so my job which back then it was like a big thing but now it's kind of like faded out is like we would direct those ships to the shore okay and then so like we're like the first we're like we would set up like a perimeter for like marines so they can unload all their men and equipment and humvees and then they would drive off into wherever they got to go to do the mission wow. so we were like the first line of defense Wow. For that. So I did go on deployment. Um, I did a seven month deployment um, on a ship. But like I wasn't a part of a ship, you know. So you didn't because that, I mean, to me, honestly, that type of stuff. Like being out in the ocean and stuff like that scares the crap out of me sometimes. It's crazy. <laughs> so did you do like a lot of like training in the water? No. OK. No so training. it wasn't like none of that. Uh, no. That crazy no. Navy. No, stuff. no, no, no. Nope. Um, <laughs> So but talk like, to me a little bit, like, what kind of, um, because I'm, you know, I like fitness a lot. What kind of training did they have you doing? So like, every, what, what was required to pet, like, that test you said, you had the shin splints? Yeah. Do you so remember, it, like, what was required of you? So it's it's push-ups, sit-ups, and it, it's, like, uh, there's different, I don't know, like, I, I can't remember, like, it was, like, eight, let's say 18 to 20 had to do 50 push-ups in a minute, and okay. then 70 sit-ups. There's just different age groups, different, um like time like you had to run a mile and a half in like 13 minutes or 12 15 okay. then like it was like 30 to like 34 let's just say it was like 13 minutes and 15 seconds mile and a half you had to run um and then you had to do like a certain amount of push-ups certain amount of sit-ups in a minute is, but like back to back so walk me through like the the average day in boot camp i get is it like the movies you up like whatever crack of dawn they're up there yelling at you yeah, to wake yeah. up pretty much yep. and yeah you and so like they're not like they don't hit you but right. like you know and then i you know having a boston accent didn't help because <laughs> that you know like the 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 recruit um the drill sergeants and stuff were like you know targeted that oh what'd you say you right, know right. Da, da, da. and then like they'll they'll say it like don't make you sweat where like they make you work out so if you get in trouble like they used to probably hit you or whatever like right, right. you know what i mean now it's like I, you know illegal i guess yeah, or whatever yeah. so I saw that. frowned upon kinda... or whatever but they make you sweat so they'll sit in a chair like this and they'll be like all right mountain climbers Damn. go and then i'll just be sitting there and then i'll be like all right jumping jacks go and so like they'll work you out for like 15 minutes Damn. and like they could just be you know like i got i got worked out because I, my accent I didn't pronounce you know what I mean like stupid stuff wow. like yeah and like in you know the navy it was like you, you would go out and you would do PT for let's say for like an hour you'd come back mm -hmm. then you'd do like they'd make you like fold your bed a certain way they'll do inspection like on your uniform and this and mm -hmm. then they'll teach you like you know different things about um different boats that are in the navy and you know like different types of ships and you know all that all that stuff so it's like six weeks eight weeks of just 
<laughs> beating, you know, teaching you how to salute and right. taught, yes, sir, no, sir, shit like that. You know what I mean? Like they break you down and then build you back up to how they want you to be. Why, um, what steered you towards like the Navy as opposed to the Army or, or Marines? So it's funny, like, like my, so my mom, so my, my mom couldn't, like, she wasn't around to like take care of me or not take care of me, but like she, you know what I mean? Like she wasn't fit mentally to like be there. Right. So like my grandfather was a Marine. I wanted to go into the Marines. I told my mom, like, I'm going to go in the Marines. And she was like, started crying. And she's like, please, like, I'll never talk to you again. Like, I don't want to lose you. Mm. Da, 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 da. And then it was like, you know, I felt bad for her. And then I was like, you know what? I was like, I'll, I'll just do the Navy. Yeah. Navy sounds good. And right. then I went and it was just like, that was all I wanted to do the Marines. And it just, you know, my mom steered me towards kind of doing the Navy, doing the That's Navy. Still, um, well, I mean, thank you for your service. No, too. I, I, I look back to and I'm always like, man, I wish, you know, it is what it is. Every, you know, you can't go back in time. Right. But I'm like, man, I wish I did something like that. But um, and it's like for, for the experience, like and, th and that's the thing, too, like. I ne I never wanted to be in the military. Like I never like was like I want to serve my country. Like right, there's right. people that are you know yeah, that no, are there that nine that, eleven happened. A lot of people right. like, I'm going to fight for my country. Right. You know and, I, I mean? and you were just kind of like asked out. And I was like. just had nowhere to go. And my my grandfather's like, well, they'll pay you and feed you and give you a place to stay. So right. you know what I mean. How and was the food? How was the food? It was good. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't you know not it wasn't good, but it wasn't bad. Right, you know okay, what I mean? Like they horrible. they. You know, like you could eat as much as you want. You know, like they had a salad bar. This is like outside of you know, um, uh, boot camp and stuff. Yeah. Like boot camp was food was all right, but you can't go up and eat as much as you want. It was okay, kind of yeah, like yeah. you had fifteen minutes to eat, and then mm -hmm. that was it. Um, but like f food wise, like you could eat as much as you want. Yeah, and, that's that's what's up. So you could build muscle if you want. If you yeah, and like that, the, you know, you know the gym was nice. That, they yeah. had a pool. You know, like you could you you know do all that stuff is free. Right. You know, like and and but like my thing was is like I didn't want to be there. I was nineteen years old, twenty years old. Right. My friends are all yeah, it's just like a get, punishment almost. Yeah, right? my friends are telling me about how they went into Boston and they got all these girls yeah. and and I'm you know <laughs> yeah. I'm work you know again like I want to be with them and and not here and I'm I feel like I'm missing out and then I'm it you know it kind of shaded my opportunity right. or like how I looked at it you know what I mean like I didn't look at it like damn I'm 19 years old and I'm going to Greece and Turkey and I was gonna ask that so uh, Greece Turkey. Well, Talk to me more about the places you got to travel doing that. So that's kind of cool. So when you go on deployment, you get they do like Liberty ports. Okay. So like when you're out there, you hit different Liberty ports and they'll fill up. Like you'll be there for like three days or whatever, and they'll fill up the you know restock the ship with supplies. And and while you're there, you can go out and like you know see see the con you know countries yeah. that you stop in and uh. And, um, and you just have what, like your military ID is. Yeah, you can dress like... in normal clothes and you just go over there. You had a curfew at like nine o'clock. Okay. You know what I mean? But like you can go out at eight in the morning and come back so at you're nine. Greece, Turkey. So, so yeah, the countries I went on deployment was uh, France, Turkey, uh, Rhodes, Greece. Suda Bay, Crete, which is like an island off of Greece. Okay. Uh, this always looks beautiful like, yeah, it was in crazy. pictures and yeah, stuff Yeah, it was, like it was that, crazy. Like. What, was your, what was your favorite uh, place to travel to outside the I would, country? I would say Suda Bay was, uh, was like one, one of my favorites. And then Bahrain was pretty cool. Okay. So like I, I like, so when we, Bahrain, it's funny because it, there's a Navy base there. And so when, when we're pulling in, they have like a bunch of hookers, right, <laughs> that, are, that are there. And I'm like, they're telling you like, oh, you wait till you see that they go to this club. I, I don't know, mm -hmm. I forget the name, but they're like, there's just all, so all wow. hookers. Is Come it in. is it like legal? Yeah, oh. I'm like, oh, I'm not gonna do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I, I I don't gotta pay for sex. You know, right, not, right, da, right, da, right. Da. and then when you're there, like, you're like, oh, it's the experience. You know what I mean? Like, so I did it, and it was, you know, it was cool. You know, like they bathe you after, and like, I mean, do you think it should be legalized like that over here? Personally, it's like. I mean, if you're not hurting nobody, what, you know what right. I mean? And that's how you got to do to like. Because I feel like if it was more, le if it was legalized and monitored and regulated, there'd be less of that whole 
trafficking thing going. You well, know, it's the human same with trafficking. The gambling. It's you know? the same with sports betting. It's like, right. you know what I mean? Like, are you, you know, back in the day, were you hurting someone by right. going to the bookie and putting 500 on the Celtics? They legalized that. It's like, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think, I don't think it should be a crime. It's just interesting to when you leave. What you think is like, oh, it's, you know, you're just taught here, wrong, bad, you know right, what I mean? Yeah. And then you go and it's like, huh, and it was just, weird, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, it was, you know, and for me it was like I was out and, it, it, and you know, like the whole ship ended up at, like, the, it was probably like bigger than this building. Like, mm -hmm. and they have pool tables, a bar, wow. and you're, you're surrounded by like, you know, there was probably like 15 girls mm -hmm. on the boat, you know what I mean? And y'all like out to sea for a month at a time or right. two months at a time. And then like, you know what I mean? You're not really not doing nothing on the boat. Yeah, it's so like it's almost like, like doing time, kind of. Right, and <laughs> you know, yeah, you know you're you're isolated like yeah, that. Yeah, so when you, you get know? out, you, and then you get onto the thing, and it's like the same, like there's 15 girls, and then you got, there's like a bunch of, you know, hookers, and you're like, ah, fuck this. Like. So you went all around in the Navy. How long did you end up staying? Three, three years, I got kicked years. out. You got kicked out? What I the, did, I failed the drug test. That. The whole time that I'm in the Navy, mm -hmm. you would think like, all right, you put it down. Like, no, I was... Right, you getting, did what you had to do in boot camp. I got, I got pills. I would be getting pills sent f FedEx. So then now I start getting other kids in the Navy on hooked on Aussies. Now this is right off the rip while you were in boot camp, I've or never, was this after? I never, yeah. So I stopped in boot camp. Okay. Because I couldn't get packages. Right. But like, so maybe like the 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 three months that I I was in boot camp or four months that I was in boot camp. I didn't do it, but once I got f from Virginia down to mm -hmm. Virginia, it was like instant. I was there for like three days, and I was talking to my friends like, "Hey, mm. get me up, you know? Can right. you send me something down in the mail?" And like, you know, I would be sitting at work. I would be sitting at work, and I'd watch watch that FedEx truck coming around the corner, and it would be like, you know, party time. <laughs> right, you know right, what I yeah. mean? Like, and I would have like kids lined up, you know, all, and we're all at the smoke deck waiting for this truck to come, mm. and then that was our, you know, that so was, my was drug it like deal. okay, yeah. You kicked it at boot camp. Now you get that first pack. It was just like same thing as before. Or just you just yeah, it was kept just going less. Every, it was just day. you okay. know what I mean, like because it was like I would get you know you would get paid on the first and the fifteenth. Okay. And like on the first, I would be like I would Western Union my friend some money. He would next day air the package down to you know. So then like let's say I would get five of them in the in the mail. Right. That would last a week, and then I would kind of like stop. Then the fifteen would come. Mm -hmm. And then I would, you know what okay, I mean, do it okay. again. So, so it wasn't like every had, day like it was here, but it was like, you know, whenever I could. Like yeah, it if you was didn't never, have the package, you pretty much didn't have it. Right. I mean, you couldn't And then, it. like, I went down to, we went down to, like, Miami as part of the Navy. Oh, shit. And then, like, <laughs> I seen this kid. He was, he was, I got this tattoo right here. And I was, when I was waiting, I see him nodding off. And I'm like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's up? What can, can you get me? So now he go, I have pay him to go get me pills. Now I'm in Miami. Yeah, on the damn. boat, on this, on you know what I mean, underway, and I'm fucked up. You damn. know what I mean, like. At any point, did you get nervous about stuff being sent through the mail and all that I shit, did, man? It's like just, just like here, yeah, like, like I just whatever I, you know what I mean. If I got caught, happens, I deal with it. You know what I mean, and uh, yeah. Because you're at this, you're probably still like, oh, what are they gonna do? Kick me out? I don't even want to. I mean, at this right. point, you still like, I, I hardly even want to be here. Anyway, Why well, didn't want to? You eventually, know. I, I, Kick. Maybe like the first two times I was nervous that I was going to get caught. And then once I realized it would just became like, set, you know, it would be yeah. like funny to me. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I remember back in the day getting uh, weed through the mail a couple of times. And it was just like, I'm just an overthinker. Yo. So, yeah, right, so right, right. It right. was just like, man, I'm like, yo, if I'm going to be doing this, you got to give me a little bit right. more of a deal or something. Right, because, right. And I would just stress myself out with yeah. it, man, just overthinking and shit. And that, you know, that I did that for like two years. And like I said, like three years and, and, uh. So that's and like what a dishonorable discharge. It what was is... a other other than honorable. So basically, uh, okay. it was like so. I served three years. I was about to get out because you know, and like when I tell you, like so now, as I'm there, like when I tell you, like the things that I did in there were like you look back, like when you say that you have a problem, like I told you, like mm -hmm. when did you when did you know that you had a problem, like so my mom something happened. My mom she went to the hospital. She was dealing with some like mental stuff. I yeah. got sent up home, active duty, like, so they sent me to the Constitution. So that's a, a that's an active military ship, even though it's, like, the oldest in the country. Like, mm -hmm. that's still, like, you could get stationed there now oh, shit. and be be stationed in Boston. So people, someone's over there right now stationed. Right. Some whatever kid fresh out of high school exactly. or whatever. 
Exactly. Wow. So they're kind of more like um, what they do is more like so it's like a tour ship. So mm -hmm. you're basically what you go there do to do you're, is to give tours. So it's more okay. like a like a celebratory type of thing. Like yeah. they do like when you see like the color guard and stuff and their navy people. Like a lot of the times around here, like the Celtics games, they're from the Constitution. Oh, okay. So when I came up here, I didn't. Like, I didn't really have to do nothing. I was only here to, like, take care of my mom right. or, like, to help my mom. But in reality, it was only, I only came up here really to, like, get fucked up, mm. you know? Right, right, right. So, so now, it was, like, a, yeah, excuse. Kind it of was like. an excuse to come up here. But, like, you know, like, I was, you know, so once a year they take the Constitution out in the middle of the sea and they turn it around. I did that. And you would think, like, oh, you know, you were on the ship. You got to go on the ship. How many people <laughs> can say they went right. out on the ship and have the Constitution and yep. turn it around? I was in the, ba in the bathroom of the Constitution sniffing 80s. Looking back, I said, damn, like, that's red flag. You have a problem. Wow. You know what I mean? And, like, so then I went home. And at the time, the Navy was letting people out after three years of active duty. If they knew they didn't want to re-enlist, okay. they would let you get out and go to college and use your GI Bill. Yeah. So okay. I, I enrolled in that. And I was my my I failed my drug test. I remember I was home around like Christmas time. Mm -hmm. um, I got the call like, hey, you got to come back. And I'm like, oh, for what? Oh, we can't tell you. That's when mm. I failed my drug test. But in february so december end of december was when i was home february of that year i was getting out honorably okay so damn. to oh, a wow. month and a half let's just say right i had i ended up failing my drug test and it was like other than honorable. so basically like i i don't get no benefits i don't get no gi bill was, like school absolutely. like it, it's like i was never there so three years of my life like Damn. You know what I mean? How do you feel about that? Do you think that that that's more like that's on you, or do you think that? Yeah. Since well, you, it's a, I mean, so, you, so I mean, it is the way it is. Like that's the rules you broke. But should it be different? I think that. So now looking back at it, it's definitely on me. I own that. Like I fucked that up. But like knowing where, knowing where, what what was to come, and mm -hmm. like the the epidemic drug epidemic that we're in now right. and then th which started back then mm -hmm. i think that like maybe now it, it it's more i don't know maybe it's more lenient maybe right. if you you know what i mean like maybe because of what it is they don't just kick yeah. you to the curb like that or or, or right. whatever i think that you know knowing what what was going on or not knowing how how bad things were in 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 these places like you said like they're telling you perks are non-addictive right. and this like who knows that it's going to lead you down to be, right. being an addict i didn't right, know right, the first right. time that i did an oxy that i was going to be an addict right. you know what i mean but right. it, it's it went that way it shouldn't disqualify me for all the good you know what i mean right. like i yep. could see if i got caught in when, when i was in went to boot camp mm -hmm. and they said oh yeah all right you're, you were a week in. You didn't even make right. it a week. You're out. Okay. But right, I right. served I served my country three years right. honorably. I yeah. went on deployment. And, you know what I mean? When I was on, on deployment, I, I didn't do drugs on deployment. Like, I, you okay. know what I mean? And at the end of the day, like, we were in a war. I went to Kuwait mm -hmm. for a month. Like, oh, I, was, I was in Kuwait. That was one of our stops. Like, we, but we were on a, on a base there. Okay. Um, so I served during wartime. Yeah. Like, I could have, my, my life could have been. Yeah, you still risked your life. You know what Absolutely. I mean? And I think that. Even though it's on me and I own it, I fucked up. It, it should. Some, you should get some sort of partial. Something. Yeah, even like. You know a, what I mean? Like, man, if they want to pay, like, pay for my school. Let me right. redeem myself. Right. You know what I mean, give at least the GI Bill or or something. Right. At least right. maybe not full, but you know what I mean, because you own that. And uh, but, but but yeah. So like I said, and and like, I when I got kicked out, that's when the oxies were fading out. They started to do like the gel gel caps that you couldn't mm. sniff them or whatever i forget and okay. like and then like when i got home it went right to heroin Damn. now um and then not just right to heroin like some people like where you're doing 80s and then you start sniffing heroin mm -hmm. and then you start shooting heroin like for me it was like i went from sniffing 80s to shooting heroin mm. and the first time i shot dope i overdosed <sighs> i woke up at the hospital and then you would think like Oh shit, that's gonna keep them straight. Like, right. yeah, that's gonna scare them straight. Nope. Next day, I was back. I mean, so you might it might Man. just go the opposite way instead of it, 
straighten you out. You just might feel more shame and guilt. And right. You just kind of keep burying yourself. And, and that's what it was like, you know, now starts the, the heroin addiction. And now it starts like now you're burning more bridges. Mm -hmm. And now you're putting yourself into situations that like, you know, like I've never been like a tough criminal like right, right. you know what i mean like i've never that's not me but but like it puts you the, the drugs put you in situations where desperate you know what <laughs> i mean and and you know for me i was always like i wasn't like raw like I, I i have robbed people and things but like for me i always went with like i i would start with the easy targets okay. and then i would branch out once i had no more easy targets so by easy targets like my grandfather, right, yeah. my cousins, my friends, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I would hit them because I know, oh, my grandfather's not going to call the cops on me. I could right. take $100 from him. Right. I could do this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they ain't going to call the police on me. So like that's an easy target. But then you could only do that for so long. Mm -hmm. And then, no, you know, when there was no easy target, all right, then I got to go to plan B. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, for me, looking back on that, like that's, that's even yeah. worse. You know what, what I mean? Like, I mean, what kind of other things? Like, I know some people would shoplift. Some people would sell drugs to do drugs. Once you kind of burn those every, clothes, like every, just you whatever know, the yeah. whatever the day brought you. Yeah, rob a day. You know, I would mm -hmm. rob a dealer. Mm -hmm. You know, I would rob. I would rob people. You know what I mean? Like, I, you know, I, I've robbed people. I've robbed dealers. I've stole. I've, you Did know, any I mean? of that come back on you? Any trouble with Look, like dealers you, trying to like? I mean, may, put like violence on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, so it's weird. Like with dealers, it's funny because like, especially like I, like dope dealers, it's like you could rob them or they're running, and then mm -hmm. three weeks later you could call them and it's like all forgotten. Right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Like, it's like just, that hundred dollars that you got them for. Is, yeah, it's, it's like not worth the friggin' eleven grand they'll make off right. for in whatever amount yeah, of time. Right. It's like so it's like I could you know, see that. and like it, you know, like the, just stupid stuff. Like I, you know, like I said, I. I broke my TV one time and it wouldn't work. It wouldn't turn on. I'd take the TV that didn't work and I mm -hmm. would walk into like Lawrence and I'd be like, oh, I got a big ass flat screen TV. And then I, they'd take the flat screen TV, mm -hmm. not checking that it's broken. And then I'd get like, you know, a finger or whatever right. it is. And then I'd be, you know, and then it's too late. <laughs> yeah, like just yeah, stupid yeah. shit like that. Like I said, like just anything like, and, and then it, you know, that, that becomes a job in itself. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it becomes more work than actually like working sometimes, I always say. Some people right. make more work for themselves yeah. trying to yeah. not work. Yeah, everything, like, just, you, you know, know, panhandling, like, I, you know, like just whatever. I, however I could take, whatever I could do to get, get high, and, and that's what I did. Now, so eventually, I, does, does the law come into play? Do you end up catching and getting arrested for anything? Uh, yeah, so I get, you know, into a relationship with someone, and, and they're addicted as well, and, mm. and like you know, we would argue and then like she started like, you know, like I've, I never like, I never hit a woman, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, like I've, I've like restrained a woman, you know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. and then I've held her from like, get, I'm not going like, right. to let someone hit Like if me. they're running at you trying to hit you, grab their right, arms yeah, or something not, like, like that. The, like, and don't... that's it. And then, yeah. and then when, you know, they, like that person would call, would call the police mm -hmm. and then it would be like, Oh well, did you hit her? No, I didn't hit her, but I grabbed her, so she. Oh, all right, boom, the cuffs are Damn. on. And then Damn. like that, you know. And then like another thing w was like, I got got caught with dope before, and then like mm -hmm. they put you on the probation, and that's just like a setup. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, like yeah. they're gonna, you know. And at the time, I would, you know, no, like if I knew now or. Or like I wasn't on drugs and they said, oh, we'll give you probation. I'd right. be like, nah, I'm gonna. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. I might, I might just do the time because it's a setup. Like they're gonna get that out of you. I yeah. feel. You well, know, especially if, at that age too. If you're just not, you know, if you're not ready for it. I finally just completed a probation for the first time. Really? Congratulations. At like thir you know, yeah. 35 though. But well, it was not many more, people. You know, not many people can. They didn't even want to give it to me though because of all the times I messed up. Right. You know, they were like, he's right. not a candidate. And, yeah. But the judge was kind of looking at a lot of my stuff was like the years was like, okay, this kid hasn't gotten in trouble. This was like 2018. Yep. I got out of prison 2011. The judge kind of saw like, yeah, his record's kind of big, but it's all like a long time ago. Yeah. It seems like this is, a, you know, he had a phase when he was younger. Right. Now he's kind of, he's doing the right thing. He's trying to, this is an isolated incident, two years probation. And, um, but have like, once I got the job and started giving them the, uh, the pay stubs, I feel like Thank that kind of helped. Like before I was still kind of, half in, half out, like, yeah, I'm on probation, but I was still 
selling drugs. You right, know what right, I mean? Right, like right. my house got raided while I was um, going to OCC every day. Yeah, you know right, what I mean? Right, right. You know, they made this whole speech about me, you know, I right. guess that day <laughs> because, of, oh, you want to be half in, half out. Right. And really, it's going to catch up to you. you no, know? right. And that's, the, you know, for me, like as far as like the probation, like that was a setup. So like a lot of my a lot of my things would be like, all right, we're going to give you suspended sentence six mm -hmm. months mm -hmm. do OCC because I was always a drug addict they always knew that I was a drug addict and uh and you know knew that I wasn't going to be able to stay sober so like that six months suspended ended up getting that and yeah. then I would you know any chance that I would get in trouble and you know for me like I'm like I don't want to kick in jail so they're going to offer me oh you can go home today on probation oh at the moment I can go home right all right I'm going to go home just so I can get high yeah and then it's like I'll last a week, and then I'm back in jail. And then it's, it's that yeah, it's that procrastinating. Um, you're gonna have to deal with it eventually, but right. it's just like yeah, tomorrow or next week right. or whatever. To, for today, right. this is what I'm doing, and that's just what it is. Right. You know what I mean? So, Especially when you're actively, it's not easy to just be like right. You got to get forced sometimes. Right. You know what I mean? And so you know, you would think like you know, at first, my first time going to jail, for it was like three months. Mm -hmm. I was like scared. You know yeah, what I mean? went to Bill Ricca, Cambridge, Middleton. R Middleton, okay. Talk. I never been and, to Middleton. So, Talk to me about that. That's different because they got like their own like, and gang so, culture and, and so all that. that up there so too. that's the thing. Like, so I'm from Middlesex County. Right. If I went to Middlesex, I could bump into people and I'd be like, oh, so so. Right. Even right. if you don't know somebody, right? Somebody knows somebody right. you know, right? And that's usually how it ends up, right. kind of. Okay, you know and, him. And, I know him. He's cool. I'm cool. We're cool. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. In Middleton, it was like I didn't know no, I didn't know nobody. Dude's like, where's Medford? It's right. Like, <laughs> maybe like three. You know, I I I was like in and out of out of there like maybe like four different times. I I knew I knew five people mm. from like when I was a kid that I came across in those four times that that was in there. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like, and it would be like one here, and then right. it would be like one another bit. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and uh, and it was just you know like. I never had like an issue in there. Like I kind of just like I I kind of just stuck to myself. Like mm -hmm. I made friends. I've always been able to do that. Like I stay out of people's business. So right. like I never got in trouble with like ratting or mm -hmm. you know yeah. like or people didn't like me. The, the drama. Yeah. And like stuff, I yeah. I just you know like I wasn't in there like stealing you know people's fucking you know or shaking people down. But like I held my own in there. Like I I wasn't a punk and people didn't punk me off. And, like you know what I mean. Like I I lived i could live there you and weren't then, running up uh bills you weren't getting high or anything no in jail? no I'm, no okay. i so i did i i not ran, ran up a bill but like i did i have like did a box nothing crazy but like i never you know you didn't get to a point where now it's like damn you got a habit and like because some no, people no, will have a yeah, habit no, in jail and it's no, like dude right. if and you we'll, can't really get straight in jail man that's, right you're right. gonna have it tough when you get out right and that, and you would think like the first time, all right, he went to jail, he kicked it. I'm gonna, all mm -hmm. right, maybe he'll be good. No, it was like, right boom, back to right it, back, or was it right back, immediately? Every time, right back. Damn. What's the thought process? Is that just like, are you justifying this to yourself, or are you just like? After a certain point, it wasn't like I enjoy. I like. I would say like after like the first. I don't know, first, like, six months, it stopped being fun, mm -hmm. shooting heroin. Like, at first, it was, like, fun. You get the feeling, you're nodding off, okay. Right. It stopped being fun after, like, six months, and then it was, like, a job, like I said. And then after, like, you know, next thing you know, it's, like, two years, three years. And then you're 24, and at this point, like, I'm 24, and um, I have no job. Yeah. I have no career. I have no... And then I'm looking at my friends, and now they're... They have a career. Mm -hmm. They're getting married. Some right. of them are having kids, and I'm looking at it like, damn, I'm 24. I right. I missed it. Like I I can't. I, I'm so, too old now. To, <laughs> and it's funny, I mean? like as old as we are now. When you look back right. and you're like, and God I, damn, bro, I was still right. a baby and, then. But at it, that time, you're like, right. it's a rap, man. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, and that kept me. So now, 24, 25, I'm like, what am I? I might as well just do this, damn, because this is what I'm good at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I'm good at being an addict. So, uh, you know, so then that kept me another two years. I'm in and out of jail. I'm wow. in and out of jail. And then... And was this always Middleton? Always Middleton. Because I was living at you, the time in Haverhill. Okay. My mom got a place in Haverhill. You end up having to serve your probation time. Yeah. What was, like, the most time you had to do straight? I think I, I got a year. Yeah, I got a year, and I served, like, I think nine. 
and then I went on. Did I went you try on. to do the parole thing or anything like I that? I did. So now I I got ended up getting house arrest, and my at the time, my girlfriend she, she I got back with her right. So mm-hmm. now she's staying in the house with me. She leaves one time. She wants to go. She's going back dating some other kid or whatever like that, yeah. right? And she just no contact with her, no nothing. She reached out to me, like, talking shit to this with, with her new boyfriend, right? Jeez. And now I'm on house arrest. I can't go nowhere. Right. They're calling me, threatening me. And then I, you know, get on the phone with her one time, and I'm arguing with him. And then the next thing I know, I'm at OCC. Mm-hmm. And the sheriffs are calling me, calling me up, and they're like, "Oh, uh, so and so called. She's she's in fear, or she she fears you that you're gonna attack, whatever. Yeah. We we gotta send you back." And just her word of mouth. Yeah. Did you get to defend yourself? Nothing. Or any, nothing? So yeah, now I, you know, like I I went, I told my mom like, oh, I'm going to the OCC," and then next thing I know, I'm calling her from Middleton. Damn. And it was like, you know, and it's just. It's just that's how how it goes, you know what I mean? And like I said, I, I it was it, at the time I thought it was fucked up because, like I said, it, it, I've never like I never hit hit a girl, right. you know what I mean? Like I'm not an abusive person, but like when you're in a drug fueled relationship, thing you know yeah. things are arguing and like you you know you're you're she's crazy, y'all you you get you're, you're getting crazy. Toxic. It's toxic, yeah, yeah. and uh. I don't blame her for what, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, after, at the time I did, and now it's just like, right. you know. It is what it is. The last time I went to jail, my mom was got, ended up getting arrested Damn. in P- Pennsylvania. Jeez. So now she's serving time in Pennsylvania. In Pennsylvania. Oh, she, lo- she loses our apartment, so now I'm coming out to nothing. <laughs> and my cousin ends up taking me in. Okay, she's nice. letting me stay with her. And uh, I fucked that up, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, and I'm now I'm in, I'm in East Boston, running around Bellingham Square, mm-hmm. and you know it didn't take long to like, before I started using, you yeah. know what I mean? And then like, and it was like, you know, that was like another like at the time it was like, I I, I was not ne- so like when I rip off like clo- like I was never like happy to like it always like it, it, it i had like a conscious right, while doing right. it and i never like wanted to do it like mm-hmm. it was just it was just like you know it was like you still I had, felt that guilt yeah that shame and where some people it, just don't they're just right know. and it, you know <laughs> and she care. she opened her door to me like she tried to get me a job and mm-hmm. like you know what i mean like she did what she could and like i you know like i was you know stealing her mom's jewelry when right. you know and her mom passed away mm-hmm. and like yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and that shit that, like, I live with. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's like, you know, like, you can never, you can never, like, no, no, like, no amount of, like, I'm sorry. It's like, now, years later, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's well, nothing. So you gotta, you know, you gotta forgive yourself, too, because sometimes, even if the person who you might have wronged, like, right. sometimes, some people, like, I don't know your situation, but there's been things where it's like, some people, like, I can never forgive you, but then right. it's like, well, I have to forgive myself because right. otherwise it's, it's going to consume right. my, m- me and my mental health and all that stuff, so it's not, you know. Yeah, and it was like that for a while, like, so now I ended up stealing from her, I got caught, I got kicked out, now I'm running around the streets homeless, I'm overdosing, and I'm like, you know, like, the last time I got high, I was in running around in Medford and I'm living in my friend's basement and I wasn't allowed to be there because his sister f- came home one time and I was nodded off at, at his computer table. So I was like banned from there, right. but I had nowhere to go. So I was like living in his basement. He had like a little couch tucked away in the back and he would like let, I couldn't go there during the day, but right. he would like open the bulkhead and let me sleep in there. So like my, my last, like towards my last run was like, I had overdosed one time. I woke up at Lawrence Memorial Hospital. Damn. I got out. I re-overdosed probably like six hours later. I woke up again Damn. at the same hospital, and, like, the same nurse was on, and he was like, you know, what are you going to do? Like, you're going to die one of these times. Like, you're not going to wake up. And, and, like, my goal was to get on the methadone clinic. That was what my – that's what I was shooting for. Nice. Like, I'm going to get on the methadone clinic. And I went, he gave me a piece of paper. So now I'm like starting to call methadone clinics. And like maybe like a day or two later, I overdosed again. And mm, I wake damn. up and he just happened to be on. 
and he's like, dude, like, wow. So you know, it's two times three, in three, one day, two and then times the, in one day, and then like maybe like within later, forty-eight God, hours or something. Like I, I, I came across him again. This just was like you couldn't get me on methadone. It was it a thing. There was like you a was, wait You were kind of sick, or was it just? Like, yeah, it was you just like you know, like so getting on methadone. It's not like uh, hey, I can call and then the next day I'll be on methadone. Right. It was like you got to wait, and then you know, so like the whole time I was using. Right. Okay. And then I had overdosed, and I woke up. And then he's like, dude, what are you doing? So now I start calling some numbers of th while I'm there. And uh, I leave. I get into a place called Dimmick. I thought it was a methadone clinic. It was a detox. Okay. They told me, hey, if you can get to Roxbury. I think it was in like Roxbury, Dorchester. If you can get there tomorrow morning, we have a bed for you. So now I go, I go get high. Mm -hmm. I walk back to Lawrence Memorial Hospital. I find that nurse. And I'm in the waiting room. And I'm like listen i was like i'm going to detox tomorrow i have nowhere to go it's freezing this was this was going on during the um when the patriots played the seahawks okay yep that I remember it was yeah, cold yeah, that, bad winter yep. it was freezing i said listen can i can i hang out in the waiting room and then in the morning i'm gonna go to detox he said yeah just do me a favor like he was cool he's like you know if you if you do use like can you like be going the, you know what I mean? Like yeah, he, he yeah, wasn't yeah. like, he knew what, what was going on. Right, and he right, was right, just right. like, just be careful, dude. Like stay here. If you yeah, want a yeah. ginger ale, go, you know, he was, he was cool. And I went and I, I was only like, my intentions was literally to get onto the methadone clinic. And, uh, one of my best friends, when I was in there, this kid was like, when we were in high school at, as like a freshman, he was like already shooting dope. Like, okay, it, he, real... so he was like, forever like he was like you know one of the first ones one of the first ones and i seen him walking in and i hadn't seen him since like i don't know maybe like before i went into the navy mm, and i was like i was like oh mikey what's up and i was like you, you know i thought he was checking in and he was he was doing the commitment he speaking. was like speaking yeah at the at for for a group and i was like y'all speaking <laughs> and that was like the first time in my in my head like like you said, like you related to like a lot of the older kids. I related to him because I knew his story. Right. And I said, if this kid could get it, why right. can't I get it? Exactly. And uh, that was like the first like little glimmer of hope that I had. Like maybe I can do it. You know what I mean? And uh, I talked with him after briefly and he was like, what's your plan? I told him I'm, I'm going to get on the methadone clinic. And he's like, oh, Keithy, like, come on, man. You know, like what? You know, that's, <laughs> that's really the goal. Like a and uh so you're saying you should have just want to get off of everything completely right you don't want to have right that. okay and he said you know if you want i can get you into this place called teen challenge so the oh, okay. teen challenge is kind of like uh, it's like a christian program mm -hmm. and it's uh it's like a salvation army they're yeah, out of brockton I'm familiar. yeah i remember in bill record they were um pushing that a lot. i heard it's pretty strict though is it, it is, is strict okay. and it wasn't for me it's all part of the story like yeah. so so i went I, it, you know, right before I was going to get released, I tried to get another bed because I'm still waiting on the methadone clinic. There was no beds for further treatment available. So I reached out like my last day. There was like a, about to be like another storm. I, I, I wanted to kind of wait that out. Right. So my my last lifeline was, was my friend Mikey. And I called and I said, hey, can you, you can you still get me that bed? And he's like, yeah. So I went over to Brockton. And now I'm still kicking dope, like I'm not sleeping. And I walk in, and I, and and I'm like I'm not like a religious person. Like right. I I've been, you know, I Catholic. If anything, yeah, yeah, you know, um, like have I've you gotten like your communion I've done and communion, stuff. I've communion. Not not my not confirmation, confirmation. Same as me. Communion. Right. I was never. Conf and uh and so now I'm there, and like I'm still kind of kicking, and I have like these people like walking up to me, like "What's up, brother? Like good hmm. to see you, brother." And then nice. like they're like, "Oh, we're gonna go." to to uh friday night mass or whatever they call it right. and it's like it's like a worship like worship or whatever and like they're singing songs dude and i'm mm. like what well, looking around like i just jo like i'm at a cult right now like i go right. to like call my friend and i'm like where the fuck did you send me dude like what the fuck is going on and this is this is your first like you did the detox, the, detox right so and you've so never I'm done like, like seven eight days and okay this is like but my this is your first time in a program like that yes okay and uh and I, I was like, what, like, I was like so confused, like, and I'm like, you know, like, but, and like, I never was like, never like really like 
Were yeah. you open minded to it, or were you kind of? I just was like, open minded to it. You know what I mean? And like, I, I like. You weren't buying in a hundred percent, though. I, I took it for like what it was worth. Like, I wasn't cutting corners. I had nowhere to go. But like, you know, some of the experiences for me, it was just like, I. It, it turned in like I'm gonna leave tomorrow, and then tomorrow would come, and then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna leave tomorrow. Okay, and yeah, then yeah. so now I stretched it for like three months by just saying, to, you know, it's right. Like a but that's in a good way, as opposed to like, oh, I'm gonna quit tomorrow. Right. Like it's so now, so at the time we were going out. Like if you ever see Teen Challenge, especially like around Christmas, you'll see them at the malls. Okay. And they'll be like offering to gift wrap things they'll be outside because it's like a non-profit so yeah. they like go outside of stores nice. and they'll ask people for like money or like hey this is my testimony and so when i was out there because you're not allowed to have phones i bought a phone and i snuck i had like a phone s snuck in and i'd be like looking at girls on mm -hmm. you know hitting up girls on facebook and right, stuff right, like right. and it was kind of like a community phone me and this other kid <laughs> and we ended up getting caught i got kicked out yeah. after three months i said i had nowhere to go Mm -hmm. I still had every bridge burnt in my life. Like I had nobody, nobody would talk to me. I had like $15. I took the commuter rail from Brockton to uh, Boston. Mm -hmm. I made my way back to Medford. Nowhere to go. That I gave myself 24 hours. I said, if I can't figure something out in that time, I'm going to, I'll just go get... back to doing what I was doing. Yeah. And just by chance, like I, I reached out to one of my friends on Facebook he was watching. I, I remember like it was when it was when the, one of the championships that Golden State was winning. My friend's like, hey, go to Tony C's. I'm going to be there. You can hang out with me, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. So now I'm sober three months at this point. I didn't know because I never had a I never had a alcohol problem yeah. that like if you took a drink of alcohol, that's like a relapse. So when I went to Tony C's, I had a drink. Right. But like and everything was fine after that. The next day I stayed at my friend's house. I reached out to my other friend. He, you know, was like at the time he was used. The last time I talked to him, he was using drugs. Now, at this point, he had like six months, maybe a year coming up on a year sober. Wow. I reached out to him to get lunch. He started talking to me like, hey, why don't you come with me to an AA meeting? So I went with him to the AA meeting. And he ended up letting me live in his, um, like, in his third floor. He had a room in the third nice. floor. So I would, like, so he gave me a place to stay. Nice. And at the time, like, I, I had, like, maybe, like, three pairs of clothes on my, uh, you know, like, I mm -hmm. had three outfits, and that was it. I'm always grateful to him because he kind of, like, introduced me to the AA thing. Yep. He introduced me to, like, the boxing thing. Yep. And then he like his dad got me a, a like a get well job like I was cleaning ca like uh, acid in like acid cleaning cars pretty okay, much yeah, yeah. like trucks the wheels and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I did that for like a couple months and then I ended up getting like a couple of the uh, you know like I worked at the Squire. I did the twelve steps. Now I'm starting to like get around sober people. I start like mending those bridges that I broke right. over time. And now it's starting to feel good. And like now I'm like, I, I'm working, not making a lot, but my, like my rent wasn't a lot. And mm -hmm. then like, you know, I'm going to the, now I have like boxing with my outlet. At this point, I'm like 29 years old. And I said like, I want to fight in the Golden Gloves. So I set a goal for myself and I did that. And it was like, you know, I fought a kid that was 18 years old, fresh out of <laughs> high school. Like I had like a job. Right, right. And you know, at this point, I think I was, I had just met my wife and she had just gotten pregnant maybe so like i'm you know mm -hmm. i'm working a full-time job right. with a pregnant wife and and she, well she was my girlfriend at the time but like you know what i mean and mm -hmm. then like I, I went to the golden gloves and i fought a kid who was like just out of high school yeah. but like just you know how many people can say that right you know no, what i mean like just to keep your word to yourself too. right it just means a lot you know boxing for me was like i wish i found it you know back Right. Back then, because like the people that I've met in boxing, I, I gained a lot of knowledge from like my trainer, you know, what I mean, mm -hmm. on like life and 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 just like, you know, like the people that are there. And, and it like, you know, if I found that when I was like younger, it would have maybe like who knows, but right. maybe it would have stayed me away from like a lot of like the stuff that I had, because like once I found boxing i looked forward to going to the gym right. i would go to the gym for like three hours and then i would come home and i'd be so tired i would go to sleep yeah. and like 
Absolutely. you know, people that I met and like that, you know, like, I mean, I, re I remember hanging out with you yep. when we yeah. were kids with, with, with Scott and Mark and, yep. and, 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 and then like, you know, you've reached out to me and was like, oh, what's up with this boxing thing? And then like, you know what I yeah, mean? And and I appreciate yeah, you for, you know, bringing me over there to the guy. Shout out to Somerville Boxing yeah. Club and everybody. Yep. What is it? Rivera yeah. Brothers and yeah, all that. RBB, yeah. Yeah. That kid, um. Rashidi. From Lynn is man, that kid's yeah, fast, bro. Yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah. I remember seeing him there, like live at yeah. the spot. I was like, wow, yeah. man, that yeah, kid talented, just lights it up. Yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, and it's like, and that was the thing. Like, so now I'm gaining ground. Like, and and it's so funny. Like, so for four years, I told you, like, my I stayed trapped in that addiction because mm -hmm. I felt like I was too old to do anything with my life. And then it just took like a year of of like sobriety right and then i got into the union nice i met my wife i had a kid you know what i mean and then mm -hmm. like after a year of working like i bought a house you know what i mean and like those <laughs> are all things that it's like that it took a year to do right you and know here, what i'm saying here you were at 24 thinking like oh my life's over and i said like i can never get that and it's like i i got that well i'm proud of you man that's that's dope you should definitely uh, yeah. be proud of yourself yeah and right yourself and it's and like you know and, and, and it's just little goals and little goals and then how important do you think that what because i'm really big on the whole outlet thing like ha in having something to look forward to even like when i was locked up i always was like i put my workout off till nighttime so right. we have something to look forward to right. all day right and uh so how important do you think boxing was for your sobriety man well it's huge just to have that outlet just everything it was like so it was like it was a lot of stuff like you know um i remember like one time the only time like i after that point that i ever like got had like a that thing come back into my head where like i want maybe want like wanted to get high mm -hmm. or it was like i was picking up clothes from my mom and she had like some of my clothes at her friend's house in chelsea my grandfather was giving me a ride and we when we were leaving i was at this red light at uh in bellingham square by the mcdonald's and i used to like live up there in the hallways and wow. like shoot dope and i said to myself like for a brief second mm. like i said i can jump out right now and and go get high and it was like i at that point i had like maybe like five six months sober and that was like the only time that it popped into my head like where i i right. like i almost jumped and then you know like thank god i didn't and, yeah, you and gotta uh, recognize those thoughts as they come for just what it is it's an intrusive thought it's right a, you know what i mean and right it, and i <sighs> you know like i said i i did the steps and and that was all like when i got sober a lot of like kids that i knew it started to like sobriety and like started to be like the cool thing like right, a, not right. the cool thing but like a lot of people it were is like fucking cool man you gotta yeah, you know i think it is right and but like a lot of that was like a lot of the kids that i knew were all getting sober at that time and uh and so like it was easier right stick around these people go do this and then the, like the whole time like like you said i had you know like i was working at the squire which you you would think like for a recovering addict it's not the best place to be, but right. like I would work. That's a strip a strip club in Revere right. for those right. who don't right. know. <laughs> but. And, uh, and like I would I was bar back in there, and I at at like two in the morning we would close, and then I'm like, all right, what am I gonna do? And I would run home mm -hmm. from the Revere <laughs> to Medford because I'm boxing, so I'm yeah, like, yeah. oh, let me run. This is a good, you know what I mean? Like, and it's. It's like I don't know. Life is like what you make it. Absolutely, I'm you know, real like, big on that. <laughs> like it, you know, like it's really about yeah. what you put your time and effort yeah. into. Talk to me about the um, the union. What 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 union are you in? What are you doing? So I'm a local six insulators. So we work with like um, like the plumbers and HVAC. Yep. We like plumbing pipes in, in like big you know big industrial bi bi uh, buildings and stuff like schools, hospitals. We put like the fiberglass insulation nice. around like the copper pipes. Mm -hmm. Okay. To you know, it's like energy con conservation. Yeah, yeah. So I've been doing That's that cool. for like six years. I'm I'm real big big on like trades. They need to be more trades. Like I yeah. feel like in schools, in high school, it needs to be pushed more. I feel like when. At high schools, they're just kind of pushing college, college, college. And like, that's the thing. It's like, you And it know, was off-putting to me. If they push trades on me a little right, more, who knows? Yeah, no, know? I agree. I agree. My sister has been a straight-A student her whole life. She's uh, a landscape architect. Wow. Went to UMass Amherst, like, graduated, you know, like, I don't know, honors maybe. But she always had right, good right, grades. Right. 
and she's working for like a big time landscaping company and right. it's like here's me drug addict mm -hmm. didn't graduate college and like she makes great money and she's probably gonna eventually but if you stuck with that landscaping from the right. beginning you right. could own a land you know right. what i mean and and she but but like right now i'm making more than her yeah. you know what i mean like and that's that's a non-college educated kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you get into a trade. I mean, there's a whole thing with college. It's all, it's, you know, money, like everything, right. you know, follow, follow the money. And she's right? paying debt. You yeah. know what I mean? Like she's paying off her college loans and it's like, you know, that's and another you thing. you have it's, a house and all right. this, you know. And it's like, I mean, I'm sure like down the line, her education and her degree is going to get her fur further right. than me. But like right now for like someone who doesn't have an education and didn't go to school, you, you're you going to tell me like, hey, you can make over $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. You're going to be like, okay. Right. You know what I mean? Like that. for a lot of people, school isn't for them. Yeah. Do you, do you speak at AA meetings a lot? Like So like right now I'm not. So I did all the 12 steps. Okay. I did that. I was sober for like three three to four years of like nothing. Now I drink, like I said, occasionally. Mm -hmm. And and what I've what what got me to that point is like and, and, and I don't so like what I noticed with like AA and NA and like grateful for, for all that. Like mm -hmm. I, I I was able to like do the steps I made amends to people that I hurt, you know what I mean, through AA Absolutely. and like I'm thankful for that. And like I would I would never suggest like, hey, you're a, a, a year sober, like, it's okay to drink. Like, I'm not saying that. Like, for me personally, I I never was, like, a big drinker. So, like, a lot of kids that I know won't drink because the next thing they know, they're buying a bag and then they're right, doing this. Right. For me, it, I, don't, I don't know if it's, like, now where I got to a point where, like, I know, like, I have three kids. I know, yeah. I know, like, I know that if I get high one time, there's no convincing myself like, hey, I, I can get high this one time and then I'm going to still be a dad tomorrow. No. Okay. Um, I'm going to, if I get high one time on an opiate, my whole, within a mm. month, my whole world is going to burn down. Mm. That's, that's a fact. Yeah. Yep. And so it's that scary. keeps me, right. <laughs> and it scary. keeps me, it's it keeps too. me, right. And but for many years, like I convinced myself like, hey, I could, uh, let me only get high on Monday. Let mm. me get high Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Right, right, right. That'll last for so long. Let me get, and then it's every day. And then I, I tried every way in the book <laughs> that, to try to convince myself. So now there's no convincing myself that I can do it this way or I can cheat or mm. I can do this. But it's like, as far as like alcohol, it's like, I got to like the point where it's like, you know, and, and it hasn't affected me yet. Like I've never gone to that stage, like knock on wood, yep. but like what works for me might not work for you and what works for you might not work. Everybody's so everybody's different. Everybody's so like, different. you know, like I have a lot of friends that stay in AA, but like what I started to realize is like, I always like, like I, I stayed in my own lane when I went in there, mm -hmm. I, I got out of what I got out of it. I did my steps. I mm -hmm. stayed out of people's business. I never try to like, Hey Bobby, uh, how are you doing this? Oh, you right. should do it this way. Right, right. Cause I'm doing it this way. Or, uh, Hey, what you're, you're on suboxone right oh well, that's wrong you're, right judgy yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. and a lot of people will like that yeah and then, the way like, you look the at people, it like if someone's alive man you're winning right bro, yeah the day. And win the how, day win today that's it exactly stay. and that's how i went into it and then what i noticed was like those people that were telling you mm -hmm. that you're doing it wrong and you're just there just to to live right and they're telling you wrong your way's wrong right and then you find out like three months later like Hey, this person was using the whole time, the whole, yeah. but they're telling you you're <laughs> wrong and you're just there. And then like, it, w I just started to notice that. And yeah. I'm like, so maybe, maybe like that stuff, not like that it's, they're wrong, but like, I just think that like, like you said, if you just live today. It's really the, even with like religion in the Bible, it's more, you know, there's always, as humans passing on right. that info. If you just look at like the literature in right. AA or whatever, it just kind of stick to that. People are, are not perfect and, and right. that's gonna, you know, there's gonna be flaws in everybody, abuse of power, or whatever, right. judge, you know, and you're always gonna get that. But say someone did, before I let you go, I just wanted to get, because we're running out of time. But it's say someone did walk into the door though and they're asking you, man, like, um, like man, I'm, I, I feel hopeless. What should I do? They're kind of thinking how you were thinking at that time. Like, they're in it. They're they're going to get sick. Like, what kind of advice would you give to somebody like that? Yeah. I would say, you know, you got to you gotta go to detox. That's a, There's no way, like, I'm going to kick it on the couch. You know what I mean? I'm sure people have done it, but it's like it's, in all reality. It seems rare. It seems like to me it's either like detox right. 
or jail. Right. Detox and then further treatment, you go into a, to like a halfway house or, or like, you know, uh, a treatment program. And then you, you get some time. I, I, I suggest even though like, uh, like uh, AA was huge for me, like I did the steps, you know what I mean? And I took that serious at the time mm -hmm. and I got what I got from AA. I got everything that I could out of it. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't knock AA. I would suggest going to AA and like, you know, and just set goals, like little goals, little, little goals to like, start picking up things. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like work to buy a pair of sneakers, sneakers that you want, like not just like a, you know what I mean? Like, and then this, and then that, and then it's like, next thing you know, you're, you're, you're getting time, and but like snowballing. those goals that you're getting, like it might take a week, right. then it might take a month, then one might take a year. And then you're, you're all right, I got a year down. And yep. then, you know what I mean? And then it's like, like for me, it, it's never too late. Like, you know I what I mean? I always say that. Yeah, never too late to do great, man. Yeah. It, and it's just funny how, like, you were saying you were 24 and you were thinking, like... Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was and the I, same way. I got out of prison. I'm, like, 25. I'm about to be 26. I thought... Now I look back, I was like, damn, I was, like, yeah. so young, and it's you like, know? <laughs> and, I, and like I said, like, I, you know, it might the process went fast for me. It might not go fast for everybody right. like that. You Everybody's know what I mean? Like, different. But it, it, you know, it, 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 it will happen. You know what I mean? Like you just you can do it if you want it. You'll you'll get it type right. of thing. You know what I mean? And like like I said, it's like get around positive people. You know what I mean? Forget don't like if you're you're running around a certain crowd. Like even though you might have grown up with those people, like separate yourself for for a time. Right. It doesn't have to be forever. Like I separated myself from my friends. And now I'm back with my friends. Like I could go and, and if my friend's using or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. which they're not, but like if I, I could go around it and be around it and not, you know well, what I mean? For me, it took me kind of being like getting a job and being around like normal people to realize how messed up things were. And, right. And everybody I hung, you know what I mean? Right. I was like, that's really, you, you're in it. So you think it's normal, but looking back, it's really not, man. Before I let you go, I'm so proud of everything. Like, see, like how you said, like, going way back with Mark and Scott and then linking at the boxing thing yeah. and then seeing how far you've come now, your father, man. Yeah. And if I could one day be a father, if I could be a, any resemblance of what I see you're doing, man, I think I would be happy with that, bro. It. So, yeah. um, hey, on that note, thanks again for coming. It's my guy, Keith. Thank I'm you. Bobby. It is what it is. What's next is what you make it. On that note, we out of here, man. Thanks again. Got a moment when they see you down.